Hello, I'm Greta D'Angelo and I work as Head of Technology at Amexi. And today I'm going to talk about five things that I think are important when designing for additive manufacturing. The first thing I'm going to mention is know your additive manufacturing process. It is quite important that you get comfortable with all the challenges, constraints and capabilities of the process you're going to be designing for. All the additive manufacturing processes are quite different and designing for them will be a different process as well. It's quite important that you do that before you start designing or redesigning your part for additive manufacturing as it may create some problems and hiccups later on in your development process. The second thing is a necessary material. So material is one of the main cost drivers of additive manufacturing. So even if the weight reduction is not one of your main objectives, it's still quite important that you ask yourself some questions and challenge your design. For example, is all the material that I'm using necessary or can I remove some of the materials somewhere? If we look at this component, for example, this is a paint manifold that has been 3D printed and you can appreciate definitely how the designers have been good in shaving down the material that wasn't necessary during the manufacturing process. So when, doing, when trying to do the same thing, these are some of the questions that you can also ask yourself. Where is it that the part is not structural? And do I need the material everywhere? Or are there some spots where I can remove it? so that the part will take less to print, it will be more, uh, it will be cheaper, and in the end, it will be lighter. The third point is functional integration. As we can allow for much higher complexity with additive manufacturing, some of the assembly step can be removed entirely. So whenever you're approaching your design, don't focus only on the single component. My recommendation is that you look at the whole system and think if some of the parts can be put together. I have an example here. This is a heat exchanger and it sits inside of a big engine. So try to imagine this as a whole ring. But what I want you to notice is these internal channels. These internal channels are 600. So there are 600 of internal channels inside of each of these components. And originally, these were soldered one by one by hand. This means 1,200 solderings done by one person. So what does it mean um, using additive manufacturing in this case? It means that now this component can be printed and manufactured in one shot removing all the possible assemblies, bringing down the lead time from several months to only a couple of weeks. The fourth thing that I suggest you to consider is post-process. Post-process is quite an important part of when printing with metal, and it is important that you do that in the very early stages of your design. If we look at this component again, we can notice that threads have been cut afterwards and also these holes have been manufactured after the 3D printing processes. So when we prepared the CAD model for this component, these holes were not there. We printed the part and then to make sure that the holes were exactly straight and exactly concentric, we drilled the components afterwards with some traditional methods. This is a quite common practice and it it helps a lot in keeping the lead time shorter and to have the part more accurate. The fifth part that I'm going to talk about is support structures. Support structures are super important, especially if you are designing for laser powder bed fusion process. They are really good and they will help a lot to keeping the part fastened to the build plate and they will make sure that when you have thin features, they don't warp or deform due to the thermal excursions in the process. However, having support structures would add a considerable amount of time during the printing process and this is translated into a higher cost. It will also be a much higher quantity of material which will also translate into a higher cost. So it always, it's always a good idea to try to keep the support structures at a minimum. Now how do you do that? Sometimes 
is as easy as turning the part in a in the build plate so just thinking can i rent the part differently can i just look at different positions and it's a bit of a trial and error process but it works another thing that can be done is simply redesigning some of the parts if you have some round structures they can be turned into a um, into a drop uh, or a diamond shape features and sometimes by changing the inclination of some of the overhangs you will be able to avoid the majority of support structures. Sometimes unfortunately you will not be able to get rid of it and that's okay but you should still be aware of it and make sure that you do all you can to try to avoid it. Concluding, the five things I would like you to think about when designing for additive manufacturing are the following. Know your process. Avoid a necessary material. Think about functional integration. Remember the post process and try to avoid simple structures. Thank you.